geleden begon de gitarist van de Rolling Stones een solo carrière. Twee cd's en een gesprek met Nova's Tonko Dob. Verder stond hij vanavond in een uitverkocht Ahoy. There's one good band in a lifetime is a miracle and two, well, you know, you're blessed, right? Is there a difference between your first and your second solo album, musically speaking? I, th I think so, main yes, there is, definitely. Uh, to me, I think mainly because I've managed to, to retain the same people. Everybody that worked on the first record is on is from the same band. And that makes a lot of difference because there's I, a sense of certain growth and an identity coming up between these guys. You know? and I, I count myself very lucky to be able to have got the same... And what does the identity look like? Well, it's a bit foggy at the moment, and maybe you could tell me more than I am, but I sense it. You know, I, I couldn't define it as yet. You know? it's not enough. It's not enough for me. Not yet. So I, I like records to feel fresh, you know. And so if, if there's a mistake or two in something, or you know, I'd prefer to leave that in uh, than go for a, another take where everything's perfect but doesn't quite have that. Edge. I, in, in a way, the end of making a record, as you say, that's the one. Even with its imperfections, that's the take that has the spirit, that has the feel. And uh, I really sort of judge it like that. And there's no criteria. There's no, you know, you don't get a little measuring stick <laughs> to tell you. You just have to go by instinct. So with the Stones, I've got this sort of lux luxury of. I can pull back and sort of hang around with Charlie Watts on stage, or I can go forward and depending how how I feel the show's going, I can I have the choice of doing one or the other. But when you're the front man, and uh, so I've got some sympathy for you know for the mixed job of doing this, that you don't get a second off, you know, I and mean, you're there all the time and you're on. And also I'm playing as well, so there's a lot to think about. And. Uh, so I, learned, I guess Mick learned that you can't just walk out of the Rolling Stones and find a bunch of guys <laughs> that are going to back you up the same way. You know. Speaking of walking out, MTV um, said that Bill Wyman right now definitely has left the Rolling Stones. I believe so, that's what I hear, yeah. Um, I, what I've been trying to do for the last few months, and I've been told he's just been trying to leave the door open for Bill until he, you know, so that he had a chance always to sort of change his mind. But uh, I don't, yeah, I guess maybe he's had enough, you know, this is, uh, this is a drag. I, mean, I really didn't want to have to change anything. But at the same time, if I look on the positive side, well, you know, I can, you know, I, I, I certainly wouldn't want a reluctant Bill Wyman in the Stones. So this way I can look for somebody that wants to do it. And it's going to be a, it's going to be a task to find the right guy. But uh, I'm sure he's out there somewhere, you know, we'll find him. Former Who bass player John Antwistle? I doubt that, very much. Why? <laughs> he's a good player. Yes, he is, but I don't think it's the same. I don't, I, I don't hear him with Charlie Watts. In the long term, there's a sort of natural progression, really. Yeah. And, you know, and then there were three, you know. <laughs> In Den Haag? Yeah, Den Haag. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was, I have vivid memories of that. The cavalry charge down the steps, uh, and uh, and I remember all of these uh, chicks' lingerie hanging from the chandelier, <laughs> and I think Ian Stewart. Uh, I turned around at one point because he was playing piano on stage, and I turned around, and there was just a pool of blood, and he disappeared. <laughs> and I remember the cops and the dogs on stage. It got very confusing towards the end. Yeah. That was the last cavalry charge I ever saw. Yeah, it's quite impressive. <laughs> so it's maybe a remarkable piece of Stone's history. Oh yeah, it was. Uh, you know, you don't forget Holland after something like that. <laughs> a simple conversation every now and then. Given the right material and the right circumstances, that the Stones still have some. Some good records in them. There's a good, there's, I have a good feeling about it. They're all playing, and uh, if I can come up with the right songs, and if Mick can come up with the right songs, I, I still sense a possibility of the Stones having another golden period. You know. Your solo albums are so good that one might think that you keep the better songs for yourself. 
Well, songs aren't like that. They do, I don't have little boxes for them to sort of go, oh, I'll keep you. They come, what, what happens uh, is when I'm riding with Steve Jordan and I'm working with the winos, those songs come out through that process of working with those guys. I don't write, I don't have any sort of big trunk of songs that I sort of look into and say, keep that, save that. I still have to write stuff for the Stones uh, stuff, so they're not written yet. So I, I don't really think of them as, the songs don't keep, <laughs> you know, you, you can't put them in the freezer and uh, just pull them out when you want them, you know, they have to be fairly fresh. You know? De Europese tournee van Keith Richards eindigt volgende maand in Londen. En dat zal zijn op 18 december. En geloof het of niet, dat is pas op zijn 49ste verjaardag. Het is tijd voor het wekelijks gesprek.